Mungkin itu yang dapat kami catat Pak, dan dapat kami laporkan kepada Bapak. Uh, inilah uh, masyarakat atau diaspora Indonesia di uh, Philadelphia. The next is Bapak Muhammad Al Arif. Uh, he just coming from uh, Houston actually this morning. So welcome, Bapak Arif. Hello, Philadelphia. Good evening. Thank you. I have bad news. They canceled the Super Bowl, so you have nothing to worry about. So welcome, uh, everyone. It's very, uh, you know, we're very happy to to be here with you, with the ambassador and also the the, the consul general. Uh, I have the task of introducing you the Indonesia Diaspora Network, Indonesia Diaspora Network USA. Coincidentally, you, back, you, you actually have a chapter here in, in Philadelphia, Greater Philadelphia, and you've just elected Ibuhani White as, as, as the chair. Please give a big hand. Yeah. Please support her. What is the idea behind the Indonesia Diaspora Network? Well, there's a quarter of a million people, diaspora Indonesia, in the United States. And there are about eight million across the world. We're actually a very powerful force. And, and, and we, through this network, we're trying to connect the dots. Connect the dots. And if we're, we're together, we're connected, all of us in Philly, all of us in Washington, all of us in New York and so forth, we can actually do much more. So this is uh, what we're trying to do. Bapak Ibu, video yang baru dilihat tadi adalah Kongres yang historis tahun lalu di Los Angeles, Kongres Diaspora Indonesia pertama. The first of its kind ever in the history of, uh, of, of, of Indonesia that its diaspora overseas actually meet. They was in Los Angeles last year in July. And uh, it was very historic. And from that, we've actually established this network. Hopefully, we will we'll actually achieve a lot of things together. Um, these, this is the map of the United States. And each of those dots represents uh, uh, apa? a big uh, enclave of Indonesian diaspora. What is Indonesian diaspora? It's you. Warga negara Indonesia yang ada di Amerika maupun warga negara asing yang keturunan Indonesia. So if you're an Indonesian national or an, uh, a US national but of Indonesian origin, Maybe you had an Indonesian citizenship before. Or maybe you have kids who was born here and now they're American citizen. Also diaspora. But also people of uh, foreign nationals with close linkage to Indonesia. Maybe some of you, some of your spouse uh, are non-Indonesians. But because you're Indonesian, your spouse has close linkage to Indonesia. So. Your spouse is also a member of the diaspora. And so we're trying to connect all of us together so we can be a powerful force together to support the Republic, to support ourselves, to multiply opportunities for all of us. Please give a big hand to, to, to Philadelphia. And, and the good news is, uh, in New York, they, have, they now have a chapter. Indonesia Diaspora Network in New York. Philadelphia, they have a chapter. Yesterday I was in Houston, but you know, they've just established the, the IDM in Houston. And also in San Francisco. Before the end, before the middle of this year, everything will be connected. Yeah? If, by the way, if you can show me the second slide. Okay. So let me do that. Yes. I also have the task of inviting all of you 
all of you in this room. In, in August this year, from the 18th, 19th, to 20th, we will actually have our second Congress in Jakarta, Yabadino. And it's a chance for us to pulang kampung, go back home, okay? It will be held at the Convention Center in Jakarta on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Bagi Bapak Ibu yang merayakan Lebaran, bisa sekalian Lebaran. Then we tell you now, so we can all start saving, so we can actually be there. So I'd like to see everyone this room in Jakarta in August, if possible. If you plan to be in Jakarta, raise your hand. I need more hands, please. More hands. Okay. Very good. And after this, we, we try to as much uh, together take a, take a picture with, with our national flag. We have this program called Merah Puti Across America. We have a national flag which I brought with me. I'm going to take it all over the U.S., take a picture with you, and as soon as it circumnavigates the, the U.S., we'll actually give the flag to the president in August. Okay? So we're going to have that picture with you together. Anyway, thank you very much. Please support Bahani so they can, you can support all of yourself. Please be active, and Bahani will tell you more about what you can do with the network. Thank you very much. Terima kasih Pak Mabit dari jauh ya dari pagi di Newsnet siang di Philadelphia nanti malam langsung ke Washington DC. Terima kasih banyak atas waktunya. Silakan Bu Sinta selanjutnya. Langsung Pak. Oh oke okay. langsung Pak Dapur lagi nih. Pak Dapur silakan langsung memperkenalkan Bapak Dubes kita. Uh, Pak Dubes siap-siap langsung curhat nih kita nih ceritanya ya. Silakan Pak Dapur. Bapak dan Ibu, malam ini merupakan suatu kehormatan untuk saya memperkenalkan Bapak Duta Besar. Mungkin saya tidak perlu memperkenalkan. Beliau adalah Duta Besar Indonesia termuda saat ini untuk Washington. <tuk> Pak Dino beserta Ibu, Rai beserta tiga Putra Menterinya. Dan pada malam hari ini beliau berkenan uh, menerima suatu acara yang disebut oleh beliau sendiri tantang meeting dan uh, silakan bapak dan ibu mempergunakan waktu yang sebaik-baiknya untuk uh, men, uh, berdialog dengan bapak duta besar silakan pak duta besar pak duta besar di nomor empat jalan Bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu sekalian, pertama saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih atas kedatangannya. Saya ingin memperkenalkan dulu uh, keluarga saya, istri saya Rosa Rai dan anak-anak saya Alexa, Kianu, and Chloe. Istri saya adalah dokter gigi, she's a dentist. Uh, also, I want to obviously introduce you. Uh, Konjen kita Pak Kapur Dharma Putra yang sangat kesit, sangat lincah, dan sangat merakyat. Thank you very much. And he's here with his wife, Ibu Konjen. Dan Pak Arif, yaitu Presiden dari Indonesia Diaspora Network USA. He works for the World Bank. Also from our embassy, Pak Haryo, silahkan berdiri uh, atas saya pendidikan. And uh, obviously, I want to thank special person Honey White. You've been very instrumental in organizing this, and you are a model in this diaspora. I also want to recognize Romo Alusius Setiawan, uh, Bapak Teddy Landero, Bapak Rudy Julo, Tan Krum, Iwan Setiawan. Haru Kusuma Haryo dan Muhammad Hidayat dari Bandi. Thank you for being here. And there's a reason why we invite you because uh, for those of you who have problems sending money back home, things like that, uh, these are the people that uh, have some ideas for you. But I'm going to speak today Kampuran Indonesia in English. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. 
Uh, I came here for two reasons. One is to say a few words about what we've been doing about Indonesia, and the second thing is to listen to what you have to say. I know our communities in Philadelphia are among the most unique, the most of a compact, uh, the most lively, the most cultured, the most active and dynamic Indonesian diaspora communities. And I know you have a lot of stories to tell. I want to listen to But first, I want to say something about Indonesia. I know many of you have been here for a long, long time. Yeah? 14 years, 20 years, 30 years, and so on. Now, I was here in 1979 also, for the first time. And then I returned, but sekarang saya kembali in the year 2010. So, I've been back and forth for about 30 years into the United States. Now, I can tell you that the Indonesia that is at home is very different today. We have a very different profile. Yeah. What do I mean by it? You know, 12 years ago, when I was working at the embassy, saya agak kecil hati. Mengapa? Because every time I met somebody here, they all were full of concern about Indonesia. We had separatist problems. Our economy was down 13%, yeah, contracted 13%. We have political instability. We have ethnic problems. We have social rights. Nothing we did was right. Yeah. It's almost, or maybe exactly like the countries of Arab Spring today, at the beginning of their democratic transition. Everything was so messy. Politically, economically, socially, diplomatically, across the board. You know, it was very difficult feeling being Indonesian 12 years ago, 13 years ago. But now, you know, I go back to Washington, the feeling is very different. Indonesia now has entirely different profile. Yeah? We are the largest, the third largest democracy in the world. I don't know if you realize that. So there's India, the largest, America, and then Indonesia. Not the three in the world. We are the strongest democracy in Southeast Asia. We have the largest economy in Southeast Asia. We have the most stable government in Asia, especially in Southeast Asia. And last year, believe it or not, Indonesia is the second highest growth economy in Asia after China. We grew more than India. Everybody talk about India, right? Everybody talk about China. But people don't realize Indonesia grew higher than India last year. We grew about six and a half percent. America grew less than two percent. So our growth is more than three times the growth of America. Brazil grew last year at only one percent. One percent. We grew at six and a half percent. More than six times of Brazil. Our economy now have reached one trillion dollars. I know it sounds not much if you live around here, but for a country, a third world country like Indonesia, very few economies in the world bisa melewati satu trillion dollar. We have reached that. Our economy is larger than the Dutch economy, which is our former colonial power, and I think coming close to overcoming Australia's economy. Jadi, kalau bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu di sini jalan, tegakkanlah muka. Banggalah menjadi orang Indonesia. Ya? Suatu ada Arab Spring Revolutions di Washington orang-orang pada bilang bahwa they hope that Arab Spring countries can become what Indonesia is today. That is reaching a democratic, stable, and dynamic society like we have. Yeah? So I, I keep telling my American friends and my Arabic friends, I hope the Arab Spring 
will become Indonesian summer, right? So we are now seen not as a problem, not as a pariah, not as a failed state, but as a model, an example for other nations. Yeah? So this is what I want to tell you. Our image today is very different than our image 12 years ago or 30 years ago. Yeah, satu. Nah, yang lebih penting lagi, bukan Indonesia yang sudah berubah juga. Tapi you know what? Profil dari diaspora Indonesia di seluruh dunia, terutama di Amerika. What do I mean? I'm talking about you. Yang berubah itu bukan hanya profil tanah air kita, tapi profil orang-orang Indonesia yang berada di Amerika. Ini baru dimulai tahun lalu. Ya. Profil orang Indonesia di Amerika atau profil orang Indonesia di luar negeri itu sebelumnya apa ya istilahnya ya tidak terlalu bersinar. Mengapa? Karena dianggap orang Indonesia yang di luar itu adalah sinonim dengan TKI, ya kan? Kalau kalau kita baca koran segala macam orang Indonesia di luar itu 80 persen beritanya adalah mengenai TKI. Karena 2 juta orang Indonesia di luar negeri itu berstatus TKI ya, dari 8 juta yang disampaikan Pak Aris. Mereka lupa bahwa orang Indonesia di luar negeri itu like all of you, the own restaurants, the own hotel dan salah tiga, ya, the own homes, right, the own business, they go to schools, they are teachers at universities, they can become politicians, but all sorts of personalities and profiles. Ya. Nah, inilah yang baru sejak tahun lalu kita bangkitkan kesadaran bahwa orang Indonesia di luar negeri adalah orang Indonesia yang bermartabat, kreatif, ya, punya penghasilan, dan bukan hanya relevan bagi keluarganya, tapi juga relevan bagi orang-orang di tanah air. Saya yakin hampir setiap orang di sini yang punya penghasilan lebih pasti mengirim kepada keluarganya, ya, atau untuk keperluan lain yang dibuat dari kepentingan pribadinya. Benar nggak? Bisa right? right? So you are an exception, exceptional community, yeah. And this profile, this new profile of Indonesian diaspora in the United States, is something that have risen. Dan orang-orang di Indonesia jadi bangga, terinspirasi melihatnya. But something you need to know, something that you need to realize and appreciate yourself, yeah. Sometimes it's difficult because. You live here 13 years, 20 years, sometimes you tend to underestimate yourself, yeah, to be honest. But, believe me, now the profile of Indonesian diaspora is very hard and it will continue to, apa namanya, to be projected in a positive way. Right? Now, if you ask me what are tantangan kita sebagai profile diaspora Indonesia, I would say ada tiga. Bapak, Bapak, Bapak dan Ibu Ibu Ada tiga Tantangan Diaspora Indonesia And you should know this yeah. Satu uh, I, ask, I ask the people in the back Please listen Tiga tantangan satu, for many years, diaspora Indonesia tercerai berai You disconnected. Tidak diaspora di Philadelphia, gak kenal dengan diaspora di LA, gak kenal dengan diaspora di San Francisco, gak kenal dengan diaspora di Seattle, di Houston, dan lain sebagainya. That is the statement of fact. It's not a criticism. It's just the way it is. I don't know why, but diasporanya banyak. 300 ribu, but they are disconnected. That's one, apa namanya, one tantangan, one challenge. I would even say one weakness. And this has been addressed with the Congress diaspora, pembentukan ID and chapters. Yeah. Secondly, our diaspora di Amerika cenderung belum opportunity driven. Yeah? You know what I mean by opportunity driven? 
masakan Indonesia yang paling enak di Asia Tenggara. Hitung ada berapa restoran Indonesia di Amerika. Philadelphia termasuk yang paling banyak, ya kan? Tapi di Amerika, hampir dari satu pun di luar apa, Philadelphia atau Albany, ada fine dining Indonesian restaurant. Yang banyak adalah restoran Malaysia, yang penduduknya 20 juta. Restoran Thailand, di mana-mana. Restoran Jepang. Restoran Singapura lebih banyak dari restoran Indonesia. Restoran Korea dan lain sebagainya. Apa artinya? Artinya, kelompok-kelompok ini lebih opportunity driven daripada diaspora Indonesia. Ini harus kita ubah. Ya. Ketiga, diaspora Indonesia masih belum memanfaatkan kediasporaan mereka. Apa maksudnya? Saya sudah keliling ke California, ke Florida, ke tempat-tempat lain. Banyak diaspora lain yang masuk ke kancah politik. Jadi anggota apa? DPRD, jadi mayor, jadi ini, jadi itu. Sekarang ini India ada satu, dua, dua orang politisi nasional di Amerika. Bobby Jindal, ya kan, governor. Dan juga satu yang dari North Carolina, uh, governor. Vietnam juga begitu. Banyak sekarang politikus-politikus dari Vietnam. Filipina juga begitu. Dengan kata lain, mereka memanfaatkan kediasporaan mereka untuk maju dalam tatanan politik di Amerika Serikat. I urge you to say, be active members of your society, even from your local political structures in Amerika. When you do that, kita bukannya marah, kita bangga. Kita akan bangga sekali melihat nanti kalau ada anggota council yang berdarah Indonesia. Ada mayor yang berdarah Indonesia dan lain sebagainya. Nah yang terakhir yang saya ingin katakan, tantangan kita, do not underestimate yourself. Do not underestimate yourself. Banyak orang yang sekarang sukses di Indonesia itu adalah orang-orang yang dulu hidup keras. Contohnya apa? Orang yang memegang mikrofon ini. You know what I did in 1980? I washed dishes at the embassy where I am now ambassador. You think about it.
it starts with you know the election of President Barack Obama, the fact that there's a the first black person in the presidency reflects fundamental shifts in American politics. You know, not just the demography, but in their political culture. You know, I, I once thought that there would be a woman becoming president first in America before a black person. But obviously I was wrong, right? Maybe the next person is going to be a woman, right? But in this transformation of America, satu hal yang paling penting adalah mengenai kebijakan imigrasi. Yeah? The immigration policy of America is changing. Now, I know many of you pay attention to this. I don't ask you how many of you have visas. Yeah? But I know some of you have visa issues. Because this is what has been reported by my Consul General and a lot of our diaspora tell us this is the life that they have. Hidokrasi istilahnya. Hidokrasi itu visa udah habis, pulang nggak mau, tinggal di sini susah. Kerja ada dua atau tiga pekerjaan, dari pagi, siang, sampai malam. Lihat anak jarang, karena kerjanya begitu keras, gaji begitu kecil, sementara benefits nggak ada. Karena kita kan pernah bawa kesempatan yang ada, kalau kita kerja di bawah. Now, some of you have children who were born here or grew up here because of that. Pay attention to President Obama's immigration policies. Ya, ada 11 juta imigran di Amerika yang papernya tidak jelas atau ilegal misalnya atau undocumented. President Obama akhirnya sudah membuka pintu. Dia menyatakan bahwa orang-orang ini bukan musuh kita. Orang-orang ini bukan ancaman bagi Amerika, tapi bisa menjadi aset bagi Amerika. Dan harus dilakukan dengan penuh martabat. Baca pidato Presiden Obama yang menyatakan bahwa orang Amerika, orang imigran yang kisahnya sudah kedaluarsa dan anak-anaknya sekolah di sini dan anak-anak yang sukses mempunyai kesempatan untuk tinggal di Amerika dengan syarat. Pertama kalinya ini dinyatakan oleh seorang presiden Amerika. Ini bukan pidato biasa. Ini suatu persepsi perubahan persepsi yang luar biasa yang saya harap dapat dimanfaatkan oleh bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu yang perlu meresponnya. Ya. Jadi kalau bapak punya masalah atau punya anak yang nasibnya nggak jelas, sekarang nasibnya lebih jelas. Lihat apa kebijakannya, lihat apa celahnya, dan masukan saya, nasihat saya, make full benefit. See if you can be part of this new change of America's immigration policy. Um, dari saya itu yang saya ingin sampaikan, sekali lagi saya dan istri dan KBRI, Uh, dan juga IDN merasa sangat berkehormatan bisa bertemu dengan bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu di Philadelphia. Dan sekarang my next task is really to listen to what you think we need to do for you. Is there something that we haven't done that you think needs to be done? Is there aspirations or concerns that you think we should know about? I would love to hear from you. Terima kasih dan uh, sekali lagi. Uh, Terima kasih banyak Kak Dino Kita mulai curhatnya nih ya Banyak yang nanya curhat itu uh, artinya apa sih? Yang juga nanya town hall itu artinya apa sih? Apa Pak Dino sekarang tinggalnya di town Philadelphia gitu loh Makanya jadi town hall meeting gitu ya So uh, Mbak, Sint uh, Mbak Sinta Silahkan perkenalkan moderator kita nih, kita punya Pak Justinus sebagai moderator. Halo. Jadi Pak Justinus Satrio dari Villanova University akan membantu kita untuk uh, moderate diskusi kita dan uh, curhat kita malam ini. Bila ada pertanyaan, tolong uh, uh, raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone to you. You can ask the questions. Hopefully you can hear it. I know um, the microphone is a little bit echoing. Uh, but uh, by using it, we'll repeat your questions. 
for the for the children to learn how so they become know what the nation is yeah. All right, uh three menurut Pak Konsul kita akan menunggu lima pertanyaan kemudian akan dijawab. Oke, silakan pertanyaan yang kedua, Bapak-bapak dan Ibu-ibu jangan lupa dong kalau bisa tidak ada pertanyaan nanti yang SMS duluan nih. Yang kita tanyain, saya tahu ada beberapa SMS dan beberapa Facebook. Uh, ini nih yang sudah diri di belakang ini, saya ngerti benar ini kacut ini uh, aktivis perempuan dari Aceh yang luar biasa ini. Silakan kacut. Dan kacut tidak ada perasaan dengan suaranya yang keras.
Okay, uh, the first question is uh, about how we teach our children about the original language. The second question is on about the law system. What is the status in how to make that? And the third question is from Paul about how to improve the testimonial communication and also how to have the communication. People think in Philadelphia to have a support testimony. And then the last question is from Paul also about how to send you to the last question. Dual citizenship. Everywhere I go, everywhere I meet in nations in the United States, the one question they always ask me, dual citizenship. Yeah, guys. At the Congress diaspora in LA last year, we had one full session on dual citizenship. Yeah. And what we did, we invited politicians from the PF. Because if you tell me, I like the idea, but I don't make a wrong. But if you tell me, and I ask you to say directly to the politicians in the PM, then you have done the chance. Right? So the progress is this. The progress is the leadership in the PM have heard you. The progress is they know this is an overwhelming aspiration of Indonesian diaspora in the United States. They know it. They weren't so sure before, but now they know it. And Mark Prio, who is the deputy speaker of the DPR, said that he promised to pay serious attention to this. So the process is continuing. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to see it happen in the short term. Why? Because this is an issue that needs a lot of political discussions back home. We or you do not have an obvious champion on dual citizenship in Jakarta. For any issue to succeed in Jakarta, you need a champion. Somebody who will fight for it every day and lobby and speak to the media every day. You don't have that in Jakarta. You don't have that in Jakarta. Yeah. No, you need an Indonesian politician who will want to do this. Right? You need a political party who wants to do this. So, the honest answer is the process is going, the interest is there, the attention is there. But don't expect it to happen in the long term, in the short term. It may happen in the long term. But the good news, yeah, the good news, there is solusi antara. Solusi antara is, kalau you are diaspora, you live here, then there is a possibility we can have a diaspora ID for you. So that means whenever you go to Jakarta or Indonesia, you will not be treated like a foreigner. Not like an American citizen or British citizen, you will be treated like an Indonesian. Right? Isn't that a good solution, Tara? Now, this is why, this is why you need to go to Jakarta for the Congress diaspora to do it. You have to say, you have to push Jakarta to come up with this mechanism whereby even if you have a foreign passport, you will still be treated like an Indonesian when you go back yeah, with this diaspora part. Yeah. So that's my answer to you. Um, I will let Arif and Kapoor answer the other question. But there's one question, the last question about Apa? Consul di Philadelphia. Mas Rudy, you know what Rudy, I just realized something. 
with this diaspora process that we have. Pertama, kalau ingin membentuk konsul general di Philadelphia, it's going to be very difficult. Why? Because the lineup is just too long. There are people who say we should have one in Hawaii, we should have one in Seattle, we should have one in Dallas, we should have one in Miami, we should have one in Boston. The lineup is so long, and, and it's not going to be an easy process. Karena ada budgetary consequence di DPR, you can do that. But if you're talking about consul honorer, right? Ini yang bisa itu adalah consul honorer. You know what has happened? And this is important for you, buddy. I have come to the realization bahwa IPN chapter is much more relevant and much more useful than consul honorer. Consul honorer itu apa? Consul honorer itu adalah orang Amerika yang ditunjuk pemerintah si Joe, si James, untuk kalau ada apa-apa kita telepon kalau ada masalah kita telepon gak dibayar, tapi dia dapat status prestige, sebagai konsul honorer ya but, if we have IDN, we don't need that anymore if we have IDN and Houston, Seattle, Dallas, Boston Miami, Hawaii, everywhere we don't need consul honorer because every time we have an issue every time we need help, we just call the IDN Right? Rahmat has a problem. Matanya di kursus orang. Who asks? Bukan konsul honorer. Karena kita tidak ada di sini. Who asks? IDN. Di atas di sini, Ibu Ina kena banjir rumahnya hancur. Dan Ibu, Ibu AI. Dan lain sebagainya. Siapa yang memberikan bantuan? Teman-teman di sini. Honey White. Gara to everybody. Right? In other words, you have function as a safety net among one another. As a solidarity network. So my theory, and I've said this to my government at, at home, consul honorer, consul honorer is becoming irrelevant because of the growth of the IDN, Indonesia Diaspora Network chapters.